If you have an old laptop lying around and you're looking for cool ways to reuse its screen, building a monitor is one of those ways. I built one so I thought I'd share the build process. Hopefully you get a few ideas if you're thinking of building one too. My monitor was built from a 12 inch laptop screen. The monitor has multiple input options thanks to the control board. It has HDMI, VGA and RCA. It also has a TV function, can play media from a flash drive and it came with a remote. To get the right control board for your screen, all you need to do is google the model number at the back of the screen and add control board before hitting the search button. You'll find results to where you can buy the board. Other parts used in this project include 15mm thick plywood, some cardboard, vinyl wrap, a long piece of acrylic plastic and hot glue. First thing I did was to cut out the plywood to fit my screen size. I made sure it was cut to the exact size of the screen. Next, I marked out the cutout for the control board, the buttons and the infrared receiver, which will be mounted by the side of the plywood. I also marked the cutout for the inverter board in the middle of the plywood. The main board goes at the bottom to facilitate easy access to the ports. Next step was to make the cutout. I used the chisel so my cuts were a little rough at first. Nothing the little sanding couldn't fix it up. Next, I created markouts for all the cable connections and I chiseled them out. This time not all the way through. I just needed it to be deep enough to allow the cable's light flush with the surface of the plywood. I also extended the cable to the LCD's lamp to help with the routing. I then proceeded to attaching the board to the plywood. Hot glue is perfect for this as it holds well to wood and also PCB. I placed the plywood on the flat surface before sliding the board in place. This will ensure the PCB is flush with the bottom surface of the plywood. The same was done for the inverter board. The control buttons and the infrared receiver were also glued to the side using some hot glue. Next, I laid down the cables with help from my trusty glue gun. I shortened some of the cables to make them easy to hide once everything was covered. Following that, I cut out two cardboards in the same size as the plywood at the beginning and then created two cutouts one in the size of the main control board and the other to allow the LCD connector pass through to the screen. I doubled the cardboard to compensate for the parts of the PCB protruding above the surface of the plywood. Next, I attached the cardboard to the plywood with some white glue. I made sure to connect the inverter cable and pass the LCD cable out through the cutout before gluing the cardboard in place. I then carefully connected the LCD cable to the screen. Next up was to test the connections and see if everything worked as intended. I hooked it up to a 12 volt supply and connected to my laptop via VGA. Once everything was tested ok, I proceeded to arranging the cables on the control board after which I then glued on the screen with some hot glue and tucked in any cables still protruding out the bottom. Next, I covered up the sides and the back with some cardboard and some glue. I made sure not to cover the exposed ports and the control buttons by the side. I then wrapped the whole thing with some vinyl wrap. The only thing left was building a nice stand for the monitor. The stand allows the monitor to be used in either landscape or portrait mode. For this, I first cut the base out from plywood and then wrapped it with some vinyl. Next, I attached one end of the acrylic to the base using self tapping screws. I made sure to center the plastic with the plywood base. I then proceeded to creating the first bend on the acrylic. For this, I used my heat gun to heat up the acrylic and slowly bent it to about 90 degrees. I did a test fit to see how far I wanted the screen to be from the base. It had to be far enough to allow the screen to rotate freely without hitting the base. 
I then cut off the extra length and drilled the hole through the top. Next up was attaching a little plastic to the back of the screen where the stand was screw onto. For this, I cut a small piece from the acrylic and drilled five holes through it. I also drilled four pilot holes at the back of the screen for self-tapping screws to go through and a bigger center hole for a bolt to sit in. Two knots were also used to prevent the bolt from wobbling, one in the back and one in the front. Next, I attached the screen to the stand and then proceeded to creating the second bend. The second bend just helps to set the right viewing angle for the screen. A very important thing I need to point out is this extra bit of acrylic I attached to support the stand. I carelessly assumed the acrylic plastic I was using was going to be strong enough to hold the weight of the screen and it might have if I had used MDF instead of plywood. So I recommend using MDF because it's lighter and a thicker acrylic plastic for this project. That aside, I think it turned out really cool looking. Hit the like button if you think so too. Thanks for watching and please consider subscribing to see more cool DIY projects like this.